puppy. <laughs> yeah. This is baby Franco, and he brings joy to our life. <laughs> Try and handle the video with him. Hi guys, I'm Sky and I'm Katie, and this is the Honesty Issue. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about hospitalizations. You're not going to be able to stay here. <laughs> so hospitalizations, what to kind of expect. So you'll go through the initial intake process. Kind of sounds like jail. Yeah. No. <laughs> you cannot eat the cactus. So usually the first thing they'll do, like you're at the doctor, like take your vital signs, mm -hmm. ask you what medications you you're on. About your family. Oh. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> when you get there, you go over your medical history, mm -hmm. medications you're on, family history. Yeah. Uh, what brought you here? Mm -hmm. If you're suicidal. Yeah. If you check into a hospital and you're under 18, you'll be in the children's ward. And yeah. it's a little bit different. It ranges from kids having severe mental illness to runaways. Yeah, runaways or this one kid. This is sad. He was actually really violent. So if you're violent, like mm -hmm. as a child, you're probably gonna go in there too. But he, yeah, like, I could like that. Small with an umbrella. The adult wars are a little bit different. It's mostly people with like suicidal thoughts or alcoholics, drug addicts. That kind of thing. Or they could be dealing with, you know, more severe issues, you know, multiple personality disorder, schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. So kind of what to expect is it really just depends on who you're in the hospital with. Like everyone's experience. Hospital. Yeah. Everyone's experience is different. The children's one is definitely better. You can get it over while you're young, I highly suggest. Yeah, it. I'm pretty glad that I did. Or else that I would have to like sign for myself and I felt awkward about that, like I don't want to be here. Kind of the rules that go along with hospitals, it's kind of common sense. Nothing that you could hurt yourself with, no belts, mm -hmm. shoelaces. Most of the hospitals I went to, you weren't allowed to use pencils, you had to use markers. Yeah, just because they were so worried about like you hanging yourself yeah. on anything. You had to get approved to get soap and shampoo just because you can swallow it. There are a lot of just risks that they try to avoid, you yeah. know, as much as possible. Try to remember if you are thinking about maybe going to a hospital, like it's the safest place you could probably be. Absolutely. Time. Like absolutely. If you are in fear that you're going to hurt yourself or a friend is gonna hurt themselves, like that is the safest place they could ever be. Not gonna let that happen there. <laughs> and you don't have to worry about anything else. You're literally there to just focus on yourself. And mm -hmm. that is really hard to do once you get there because you're so concerned about getting out. But if you're thinking about going, do not worry about when you're getting out. Don't even worry about that. Yeah. Your only concern is yourself and getting better. I actually had someone comment on our Tumblr page that they were nervous about checking into the hospital because of they were in school. Mental health takes priority over everything else. Yes. Yeah. I told Anonymous that, you know, if they were worried about that, you know, I don't think schools like mark you absent if you're in the hospital. When I was in the children's ward, they had they just continued your school while you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if school's an issue, like get that out of your head. Like they'll mm -hmm. make you it's do not that while you're an issue. in yeah. the hospital. Yeah. They're for sure not going to hold it against you if you're trying to, you know, help yourself get better. Yeah. I know that that was a concern for me. I was actually hospitalized in August and I almost missed my first couple of weeks of senior year. And so I was really kind of, okay, I need to get out of here. And looking back, I don't want to say that I wanted to stay longer, but I wish that I took more of it in. When I was in the children's ward, so I've been to the hospital three times. When I was in the children's ward, I was so focused on getting out. Like looking back, I probably wouldn't have ended up in the hospital the other two times as an adult if I would have just listened to my therapist and really tried to get better. You have to want to get better. And be honest. Please so be honest. honest. Yeah. You know, who are you helping by lying? I, I know that you can kind of guess what they're looking for, you yeah. know, easily answer no, you know, I'm not thinking about hurting myself yeah. or no, I don't have that problem. You're missing an opportunity to recover and get better and, you know, not deal with this anymore and not have that fear of, oh gosh, maybe I have to go back. Yeah. Just get it done the first time. Or psych you out. That usually happens whenever the doctor gets there the next day. If you go in on a weekend, they usually won't come back till Monday. Yeah, I'd wait like three days. Yeah, that's what I do too. Mm -hmm. So the difference between a therapist 
and a psychiatrist is a psychiatrist is an actual doctor who can like give you medicine and diagnose you yeah i know that getting a diagnosis is a huge part of going to the hospital, going to the hospital yeah. just so that you can clarify what you're dealing with what medications you need to be on you don't get a ton of one-on-one -on -one therapy in a hospital it's definitely more Group. group. Yeah, it is group based. Oriented. One of the best things, my last hospital stay, we did music therapy. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, we did music therapy. <laughs> There's a song called Message in a Bottle. Do you know that song? I don't. Okay, I'll show it to you later. But anyway, they gave us an outline of a bottle and we had to put all our worries in it, relate the lyrics to how we were feeling. <sighs> I love music therapy. One of the rules in my hospital was that we weren't really allowed to talk. Like we could once we were in a room if we had like a roommate and stuff but you weren't really supposed to become friends. That happened anyway, but yeah. it was interesting. The biggest thing I worried about when I wanted to go to a hospital is the cost of things. I couldn't afford it, my parents couldn't afford it, whatever. Don't worry about that. Do not let that stop you from going to the hospital. No. Like, you you being alive is more important. And vastly more important yeah. than whatever worries you have. I'd say the biggest, the most helpful part of going to the hospital was getting diagnosed with things. Like, I can't imagine not have going to the hospital and not getting diagnosed. Like, like that's I would have thought I was going for. crazy. <laughs> like, my yeah. whole life. No, exactly. And I think that's important. If you really feel like you need to give your illness a name, then that's, they can help you out yeah. there. Especially because I'm not a huge fan of self-diagnosing. I Don't think self it's really important to have a, pro have a professional opinion on that. Don't expect your diagnosis to say that that stay the same the whole time you're there. I don't know about you, but I had a different diagnosis every two or three days, you know, understanding what I was going through. The only thing, they didn't diagnose me with bipolar disorder when I was 15, but they did like two years later. Yeah, so. I wasn't diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder until last year. Yeah. Which I thought was something huge, like, oh. I feel like I should have known that. I should have known that. You're not being honest, they're not gonna diagnose you with the right things. <laughs> and you're gonna be on medicine that you hate. Yeah, or that's gonna, you know, not work for you. So you might be thinking, when is it appropriate to, you know, look into hospitals as an option? Honestly, I think if you're thinking about it, it's probably time to it's go. Probably time. <laughs> Another warning sign would be, you know, if you are really thinking about hurting yourself or killing yourself, or you are just becoming a stranger to yourself, you know, whether it's suicidal tendencies or, you know, people are noticing a great change in you and mm -hmm. it's not for the better. You know, if you're getting any of these warning signs, I would recommend going to the hospital. It took me a suicide attempt to get to the hospital. So please, not a joke, please go before you ever you go about doing that. Yeah. Point is, if you have the thought of going to the hospital, you should go. And if you've never heard of like a mental health hospital, Google it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, crisis hotlines can help you out a lot with that. I know that we we don't stress that enough. Crisis hotlines are important. They are very important. And they will totally know, you know, all the yep. details about, you know, how to go about that and where is the closest to you and how it's going to help you out yep. even better than you can. Uh, hospitals can do good things. Uh, I think... We're big advocates. Me. Yes! Hospitals and medication and, and therapy. therapy. Guys, we love you so much. Yep. I hope you're taking care of yourself, and if not, let us help you, or let someone close to you help you. Yep, you guys can email us, tweet us, tumblr us, you guys can <laughs> reach us on YouTube, whatever is easiest for you guys, but all of those social media addresses are in the box below. We have merch! Please get Once it, again, I really want a sweater. <laughs> there's two weeks left to get it. I love you. <laughs> I do. <laughs> oh. Okay. One, two, three. Oh. No, nope, that was terrible. You're terrible. Okay. <laughs>